Thingamajigs, An American Fairy Tale by A.S. Templeton Fade In Interior Sitting Room, Residence, San Francisco, Day, 1901 Jane Gladys Brown, female, eight, American, seated serenely in the afternoon sunlight in a bay window's alcove, embroiders a sofa pillow cover mounted in a handheld embroidery frame. Visible outside through the window, a vibrant cityscape. Nora, female, Irish housemaid, appears in the doorway. The silver's all polished, Miss Gladys, and I'm off to Fisherman's Wharf. Sure you won't come along? No, thank you, Nora. I need to finish this in time for Papa's birthday party tonight. Your mom ought to be back from her shopping any time now. Will you be all right? Alone? I can manage till then. As you please, Miss Gladys. Close the door, will you? Nora closes the sitting room door. Jane Gladys embroiders. From the upright piano, its keys unmoving, comes the ghostly eight-bar intro to Sweet Annie Moore, John H. Flynn, 1901. The ghostly piano accompaniment plays while Jane Gladys embroiders, softly singing the first verse. Annie Moore was the name of a sweet little miss who lived round the corner from me. The sitting room door handle jiggles as Not a girl or a boy who did not enjoy Jane Gladys concentrates on her work. Sweet Annie Moore Society. The ghostly piano falls silent. Did you forget something, Nora? No response. Jane Gladys looks over to see, to her alarm, standing in the middle of the room, a book agent, male, middle-aged American, short, fat, balding, and out of shape, a large leather-bound book under his arm. Now, don't be afraid, my dear. I shan't hurt you. Who are you? That would be telling. Are you Jane Gladys Brown? Jane Gladys remembers to be polite. Yes, sir. Uh, very good, very good indeed. Uh, hmm. I've had quite a hunt to find you. How did you get in? Uh, that, too, is a secret. What do you want? Oh, I'm down to business. I'm going to be quite frank with you. To begin with... Your father has abused me in our most ungentlemanly manner. Jane Gladys springs up from the window seat, embroidery in one hand, pointing toward the door with her other hand. Leave immediately! My papa is the best man in the world. He would never abuse anybody. Allow me to explain, please. Your father may be kind to you, for you are his little girl, after all. But when he's downtown in his office, he's inclined to be rather severe, especially on book agents. I called on him the other day and asked him to buy the complete works of Peter Smith. What do you suppose he did? Jane Gladys impatiently trying to remain civil. He ordered me from his office and had me put out of the building by the janitor. What do you think of such treatment as that from the best papa in the world, eh? I think he was quite right. Oh, you do? Well, I resolved to be revenged for the insult. So... As your father is big and strong and a dangerous man. The book agent grins as he chuckles unpleasantly. Jane Gladys more curious than fearful. What are you going to do? The book agent pulls the book from under his arm. Why, I'm going to present you with this book. The book agent draws a fountain pen from his vest pocket. How do you spell Jane Gladys? Jane Gladys casually hides the needle point behind her back as she puts on her best poker face. J-A-Y-N-E-G-L-A-D-D-I-S The book agent inscribes the names exactly as given onto the book's frontispiece. Thank you. Now this... The book agent thrusts the book into Jane Gladys's hands is my revenge for your father's ill-treatment of me. The book agent bows himself out with, Goodbye, my dear. The book agent shuts the door behind him. Jane Gladys sets aside the embroidery. What a funny little man. Jane Gladys eyes the book's front cover. And what a funny name for a book. 
Jane Gladys runs her fingers over. Insert. The book. The book's leather front cover, embossed with the book characters below, and titles in red and yellow. Thingamajigs by Amy Farman Blunk. Illustrated by Waldo L. Selwyn. Thingamajigs by Amy Farman Blunk? Jane Gladys opens and leafs through the book until she encounters the illustration of a clown. Male, period classic, huge clown ears. The book's page crackles and creaks. The clown leaps from the page and onto the floor, growing to life-sized. He over-the-top stretches and yawns as Jane Gladys looks on, more offended than frightened. 